Hey everyone, I'm your host Brittany Jones Cooper and welcome back to Build. The Broadway musical Hadestown intertwines two mythic tales that take audience members on a hell-raising journey to the underworld and back. Today I'm sitting down with Reeve Carney and Eva Noblezato who play Orpheus and Eurydice. Welcome guys. Hi. Thank you. How are you doing today? Really good. Thank you for braving the rain. This is like the weirdest day. It was like midnight outside. It's kind of nice though. It cleans everything out. Yeah. I love that optimism. That's very Orpheus of you, you know? <laughs> Looking on the bright side. So, yeah. uh, first, I want to say I got to see this musical this week, and it was so much fun. I didn't read a lot going in, and that was so awesome because it's just so beautifully like staged, and the singing is on point, and the story is so sweet. And so congrats to you guys for all the work you've put in, because I can tell. Thank you. Um, and obviously, to the uh, Outer Critics Circle Awards, 12 nominations. What does that feel like? That's really exciting. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, it's exciting to see people feeling the same way about our show that we feel, yeah. uh, the same way we feel about the show. So for those who maybe aren't familiar with Town, can you give me like a quick sort of plot synopsis? Yeah, well, it follows the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, paralleling, paralleling the story of Hades and Persephone. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a lot of uh, climate kind of plot twists, and it's about young love and old love, and... Um, there's Greek mythology, but it also definitely compares to like modern yeah. day scenario. So, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, even though I kind of did. Yeah, no, that Come was a fair it. little <laughs> synopsis. It gets people interested. And Reeve, you play Orpheus. So tell us a little bit about him. One thing I love about Orpheus in Hades Town is his human, his, his sense of humanity and the sense that I, I feel that watching the show, I'm hoping that people can relate to mm -hmm every one of his decisions, and not only his decisions, but every one of the other characters' decisions, I find each character to be relatable uh, at different points throughout my day even, not just throughout my life. So, uh, yeah, I think, but he is sort of a, I don't, I don't want to say too much, but it, the character actually changed a lot from London because we first did the show together, yeah. the National Theatre in London, and uh, one of the major changes was uh, to Orpheus and Hermes' relationship and Orpheus's character in general. And I think it, it's, I, I like what that's done for the show. So since you didn't see it in London, you might not know. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. It's hard for me to explain my own character, I guess. Yeah. But how fun is it uh, as an actor, and prepare for this, I'm going to ask you this too, to have originated this character somewhere else and have time to sort of live with them and develop them before you come to Broadway? What has that process been like for you? Well, because there were so many changes, you, you, you prepare as much as you can and then you get here. And I, one thing I love about our team, they're so flexible and collaborative. So uh, Rachel Chavkin and Anais Mitchell, I mean, Anais was feverishly writing up until maybe four days before we actually opened the show. And so uh, they're, they're always working and things are always evolving, which I think is uh, an opportunity we have in the world, which is part of what we're trying to say with Hadestown. And how about you? You play, am I saying it right? Eurydice? Eurydice. 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 Yeah. So uh, tell me about your journey with her, because again, you played her over in London. I did. And you've got to live in this character for a little bit. So what are some of the changes or evolution that happened with her up until now? I think the biggest change um, that will shock most people is if you read the Greek mythology, she doesn't really have a voice. There's not really a dialogue or conversation that she has with anybody. She doesn't get asked any questions. Um, so my job um, that I tried to do, and like Reeve was saying, completely encouraged by our creative team, was to give her a voice, was to give her a sense of um, humanity, but also authenticity authenticity, she makes a decision, she makes decisions, and she's kind of a badass, which I like, like saying that she's kind of a badass. So for me, the London transition wasn't huge, I just kept layering. Yeah. But I mean, it's the best thing in the world to originate a role, mm -hmm. and um, especially with this beautiful poetry that we were given, it's almost like, you know, the, the outline's already there, we just fill it in with beautiful colors and sparkle. Yeah. Let's talk about the rehearsals. Oh, just as the, oh the look at this sweet. Okay. Look at this sentiment. This is how they are on, on stage. It's so cute. Come see the show. <laughs> but that does go into my next question about rehearsals. What kind of work did you guys do to continue to build that chemistry? Because it really is tangible in the audience, the kind of love that your two characters share. Well, the National Theater has a bar that they refer to as the green room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of joking, but it's, it's an interesting culture over there, which was really fun. But I, we, we all had the chance to spent a lot of time together and, and really developed friendships and bonds. And I, I've been friends with Patrick Page, who plays Hades for almost 10 years now. Mm, yeah. So, uh, but it, it's, it's not hard with this one. So it, 
when you have someone that's as giving on stage as Eva is, it's an open and always listening. That, that's that's the best thing you can have in an actor and a scene partner. So it's very easy, actually. Hmm. <laughs> no, I love my job. We have a good time because um, if you can't really develop that layer of trust with actors, um, especially when you know we're falling in love, and it has to be, um, it has to be visible. It has to be tangible enough for like the ending to really affect the audience. Um, and also, like, very grateful that the friendship was there so that we could just goof around. And, I mean, this isn't, like, the funniest show. So <laughs> I'm grateful that we can have a laugh on the side. Yeah, we were surprised by the laughs in the first preview. There were, uh, there were a lot of new laughs really? that hadn't exist in, existed in the other versions. And uh, so, yeah, I was surprised by that. But it's good to have a balance. There, there, so there is some humor, but, yes, yeah. it's not. It is a tragedy, as they say. But I think with Andre there as Hermes, and he kind of, like, brings some swag and humor to You know what I mean? Like, I think that helps people, like, oh, yeah. kind of settle in and he kind of sets that tone. That we're we're going to go on a ride. There's going to be ups and downs. Exactly. But, like, buckle up. We Amber can... Gray was saying that in the beginning, you know, when, for those who haven't seen it, I'm so sorry. In the beginning, he kind of walks on stage as Andre. Yeah. Right. That's kind of like a gift to us to be like, okay, we're going to do a show. It is. Yeah. He kind of collects all of the energy and focuses yeah. it in that one moment. Mm. Yeah. I remember watching that moment and being like, what? This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it felt like a really fun concert, and it kind of starts with applause, and you're like, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. How fun is it for you guys to walk out every night and feel that energy right away? It really relaxes you, yeah. which is, I think, the best place to start as an actor and a performer, you want to be as relaxed as you can so you can make as many truthful decisions as you can in the moment. So it's, that is helpful. Yeah. And then we get a little vocal warm up in the first number two where you can do mm, a little hum. <laughs> so that's also kind of nice. That's so true. <laughs> Speaking of vocals, uh, do you guys have a favorite song to perform in the show? I don't know. I, it's interesting. It's so beautifully crafted the way that Aeneas has put this together and with Rachel's help um, in terms of uh, the development of the project. But it's, uh, I, I, I hadn't thought of it. I almost, for, for a long time, I thought of it as one long song. Yes. But there are a lot of beautiful songs mm -hmm. within that one long song. But it is like a love song, the entire show. So it's hard, it really is difficult to pick one song. I get what you're saying because it does really kind of seamlessly roll in and out of like the talk parts all of a sudden we're singing and mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, how, how long did that take to get down? Because it really is like this seamless thing. And so you, a lot of you are on stage for a lot of the night. Mm. Yeah, I think most of us are. Yeah, uh, yeah, most of us are on stage. I mean, Andre's on stage pretty much yeah. the whole time. Mm -hmm. The only time he leaves, I think, is intermission. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. I just thought about it. That's mental. Yeah. It was no. something really unique that I noticed. It's like you really um, have to be kind of locked in. Mm. Not that you're not already in, on Broadway, but like you are constantly present and constantly on stage. Is that a unique thing? I guess you've been doing it for a couple of years. but I think it's kind of easy, like I said before, with this music and Aeneas's poetry and also the way that Rachel has... Um, created this atmosphere of like cosmic love. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you could even try to step foot out of it once you're in it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, even if my body's tired, even if my voice is tired, the second that we're on stage and Andre says, all right, I'm in it mm -hmm. and I'm in it, we're all in it to win it. And it's a great feeling. You don't want to leave that, that energy. It's just, it's too magical. Yeah. What sort of work then do you have to do on the back end? Because there are moments where you guys are just emotionally, I can see you're putting it all out there. What do you do after the show to sort of rebuild? I like to say, which maybe is silly to say, I like to act as little as possible, if that makes sense. And, but I, th I think when you're doing that, it, if, if you can get to that spot and it doesn't feel like you're putting anything on, then it, it is easier to come back from those because you're you're just going where your your soul and your body is telling you to go, yeah. so I think that that I guess that's the goal. So, but sometimes you know you have to rely on other things because you're doing it eight times a week. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It it, it feels like um, you know it's 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 work. There, there's a lot of uh, it, it's strenuous in some ways because there's a lot of physical movement in the show and things like that. But it feels like digging a hole to a place you, you, you're excited to go. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, we're going to be digging this hole and, and we have no, no one's told us where we're going. We know where we're going. And so it makes it all the hard work quite easy. And, and really, you know, you don't feel 
exhausted at the end. I, I certainly don't feel exhausted. No, yeah. really. I've had more strenuously emotional and jacked up roles that I've played. <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah. <laughs> but what's amazing about this is that I know that there is no fourth wall. Mm. With the other ones I've done, it's like there's a fourth wall and I'm going through this. It's almost like the movie in my mind, lol. Um, in, in a way that I, I have to go through it with, by myself. But I know that because if I pretended that we were doing this in a Greek amphitheater, um, and the audience is the world, the, the, this is our love song to the world, it already takes away the division. So whatever I'm going through, I know that the audience is feeling as well. So in a way, it's kind of a selfish connection that I have with, <clears throat> excuse me, the audience and also my castmates. Mm. So that it is tiring when you're crying and you're, you're doing it um, eight times a week, but the reward um, is kind of a heaving blessing at the end of the show yeah. when we sing Road to Hell 2. And I know we've gone through this together. Yeah. So it's not actually that tiring to my body. It's weird. Yeah, it's a bit of a catharsis for the audience and the performers mm -hmm. at once. Yeah, has that always been a part of the show? Because I really did enjoy, you know, the lights kind of coming up and us sort of having that moment. And has that always been a part of the show? It's, it was really special. Oh, at the top of the show? At the end. At the end, yeah. yeah. They've really worked on that. And Bradley King, our lighting designer, and Rachel Chavkin, who did great comedy of 1812 mm -hmm. together, they, uh, they're an incredible team, and so the, all those little changes have been perfected over the last three iterations. Yeah. And, you know, we have the Greek mythology, and there's some Louisiana Bayou vibes, um, but there also feels like there's a slight political message in the show, and I, I wonder if that's just me putting that on the show, because it was, you know, workshop back in 2016. It really has nothing to do with where we are now, but there are these themes of like, when he says build the wall, and um, there's even some nods, it feels like to climate change in there. And so are those things that I'm reading into, or are those discussions that were, that you guys have had as well? Uh, well, I think that, uh, I think that in most cases, physical walls are merely manifestations of emotional walls mm -hmm. that tend to form those physical walls. So. In that way, I think this show will feel relevant throughout the ages because th these are things that, that create these problems, um, wanting to separate yourself from one another or ourselves from each other. And so um, I, I think it, it's more lit that the song Why We Build the Walls uh, appears to be a bit more literal these days, but I think it's, it's it, and A.S. wrote this music in 2006. I think she wrote that song in 2006, so that's pretty amazing. She does have a prophetic mm -hmm. gift, in my opinion. There's something there that, and um, she, also, yeah, with, with all the nature, maybe you should speak about some of the. Oh, yeah, thank nature. you. Our, to our green, our green captain. Thank you. I'm the green captain for Hadestown. <laughs> um, I don't think that Aeneas intentionally wrote this song as an ode to talk about climate change. However, it is a natural thing. It, we kind of have it set in an apocalyptic mood, the, the, the vibe and the energy of that. Um, but also, yeah, like our, our earth has been slowly dying for a very long time. And um, it just so happens that the show is coming out in the um, kind of the, the climax point of us talking about climate change and us actually doing something as a human race to stop and to encourage each other to have a sustainable earth and whatever we can do, our tiny hands, the billions of us on this earth to do something small that will affect our earth a little bit. Um, and that's what I think, it's a love song to the audience, but also a love song to the world that we're in. You know, I, I see it as that, as my, for my character. On that note, can we just talk about Amber Gray for a second? We can oh, yeah. talk about Amber Gray for a few seconds. I mean, she, I'll let her change the seasons however she wants, whenever, if I get to hear that voice. Uh, what has it been like just working with her? Because you both have really fun scenes with her. I <laughs> love Amber Gray. She's my neighbor. Like, literally, our dressing rooms are next to each other, and we keep our doors open so that we can just talk crap to each other and, and make jokes. And she is... I've been lucky enough to even to work with her now, but in London, like starting our journey abroad, it was just very special. Like she is an incredible woman. Not only is she um, the performer that she is, for those of you who haven't seen Comet or Haiti Sun, please come see, like she's incredible. She's also a mother of two and she's doing all of this work. She's doing all the press that we're doing, doing eight shows a week, breastfeeding, being a mother. Like, I don't know how she looks like that and sounds like that. She's a, she's a superhuman. 
And that's yeah, the four of you were in the show in London, right, Patrick? The five actually. Oh, and Andre. Andre yes. as well. Oh, okay, that's yes. awesome. So, how special is that family now that you've been on this road together? It's great. We we're, uh, we're all becoming closer, and uh, I feel like, dare I say, I think Andre. We may be becoming friends with Andre De Shields. Yes. Which uh, is he is like the coolest guy in the world. So I'm I'm very excited about this. He was in the wave, guys. Like yeah, I know. amazing. <laughs> but we've gotten to know. Um, yeah. <laughs> In, on Broadway, we're, we're getting to know people. I think being on our home turf, everyone's a bit more yeah. kind of, you know, not relaxed, but a little bit more in, yeah, I don't know, something. Um, you guys just, re you're going to record the original cast recording of Hades Town. Mm -hmm. You can snap for that. So what is that process? Like, how do you guys redo the recording? I actually don't know. Do you do it in a studio? Do you do it live in your mic? Like, how does the cast recording well, work? Well, th I think they've recorded a number of our live performances, but I don't think that's the way we're doing this, but you never know. I mean, maybe they'll, you, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I assume we're going into a studio yeah. to do this. I have not been even sent the email for the day, <laughs> so. Yeah. It's, it's happening this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. We're recording it this weekend. That's exciting. And I hear it's. That's, that's all I know, but all yeah. we know. <laughs> I think it comes out in June. Yeah. I think the 7th of June. Yeah, yeah. okay, we know that. So Off we'll Twitter. all be marking, yeah. The, yeah, I know. We'll all be marking our calendars for that. But that's exciting, right? Because I, I've been listening to the old one and I love it. But now that I've seen you guys perform, I can't wait to, to hear the new cast recording, you know? Thanks. Yeah, that's exciting. On that note, do you guys, uh, I know you guys are both musicians in your own right. And I know we have a lot of fans in the audience. So let's talk about some music. What do you guys have going on, Eva? Uh, I do a few, uh, some concerts at the Green Room 42 mm -hmm. um, on 42nd and 10th. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> very kind. Um, I don't have any um, coming up at the moment. Um, I'm a bit poorly, so I had to prioritize the show. Um, however, once the dates do come back up, I will totally let you guys know. It's a good time, so please come on down. And also, I'm working on an album, personal album for myself. Not for myself, but my own music, so. And uh, what's sort of the vibe of the album, if you can share it a little Ooh, bit? so this is what I always say. For those of you who know the artist Jessie Ware, she's a British singer. <gasps> Come on, Brittany. Oh I Come love through. her. Okay. Yes. If her and Amy Winehouse what? had a baby, and the baby was best friends with Nora Jones, and they created <laughs> a, 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 a spiritual angel, that would probably be the vibe of my album. <laughs> <laughs> that just made my heart so full. Those were like just like those are perfect combinations. Cannot wait to hear that. Uh, and how about you, Reed? What are you working on? I'm also doing concerts at the Green Room 42. Yes. Um, and uh, they those are coming up yeah. soon. Um, I think my next one is June 30th. Cool. Once once we have a little bit more free time, yeah. and um, and I have an album called Youth Is Wasted that I did I, I recorded and produced and whatnot. But yeah. 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 How fun is it for you guys to just l explore different genres? I mean, both of your voices are so versatile. I mean, is that fun for you just to play with different? genres and themes in music. Yeah. Hell yeah. It, definitely. I mean, and even in Hades Town, we're, I think we both think of it this way. The vocal tonality is so directly connected to the character you're playing mm -hmm. that uh, we both sing in a quite different way mm -hmm. in Hades Town than we do with our own music, mm -hmm. just because the acting is sort of what leads yeah. that. And, and um, in this show, it's, it's well, for, uh, it's different for each character, but. Yeah. He, for those of you who have seen it and who haven't but know, like he obviously has the most incredible voice you've ever heard. But it's like only 30% like of what he can actually do. It's disgusting. Yeah, I didn't know your voice could go that high. Damn, well. I mean. Yeah. I grew up loving Bobby McFerrin. That's where that sort of thing started for me. The, just accessing that part of my voice, just listening to his albums. And, uh, and a lot of female singers too. But yeah, it, it works with the character. I think. Well, with Patrick being as low as he is, Hades has this voice. F sounds like it's from the depths of hell, and so Orpheus <laughs> had to be the opposite. Really, he means that literally. It's the deepest voice I've ever heard. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then did the La La Laws get stuck in your head for like hours after the or before the show? Maybe I don't know. I mean, other other songs do as well though. But yeah, that's nice. I. I got to see that commercial. That was exciting. The first time I saw the commercial on TV with the laws in yeah. it, the, with the flowers, it was really nice. But yeah, sometimes it's a. I love 
One of my first questions for Aeneas was, what do the laws represent? Mm. And that's something that's really come into focus mm. over the last three versions of the show. And I, I, I can't wait for people to see the show who haven't seen it. Right. And I love that it is a wordless chant mm. in a way. That one part, I think, is something that it's important to keep it sort of wordless. That's why it's so damn catchy. Yeah. It was, I was singing Any laws language, like for the yeah. rest of the night after that. <laughs> can't go quite as high as you, though, so you know, Maybe keep you those can. to myself. I can't. Yeah. Um, before we go, we do have a couple audience questions. So who do we have first? Hi, thank you so much for coming today. Um, my question is, you've performed um, for multiple audiences around the world. When, you know, New York, London, what have the audience reactions been like and how have they been different? Do they laugh at different references, stuff like that? Uh, I will say that there's a huge difference between British and American audiences. And um, I actually know more about British. I, I've worked there longer. I would say my biggest uh, statement about the two would be that American audiences come to um, experience something and the British audience has come to witness something. It's like how I view them when they come to see theater. Um, we've had some very interesting reactions in New York where at the end we've had like just upright laughter um, because people get nervous and they don't know what to do. I can relate. And in, um, in England I found that the funniest reactions were at the stage door. People who really did not expect to come and <laughs> feel any emotion, and uh, they just couldn't speak English, which was ironic. <laughs> and they're from England. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, I ran into my friend in the theater, and she was bawling. She couldn't even talk to me after the show because she was so consumed by the performance. That happened the last night. There was a really lovely girl that came backstage, and she was talking to one of her producers, and she was like, you guys are amazing. And she was looking at me, but she was still crying. And she was like, I get, oh my god. <laughs> and I was like, it's OK. <laughs> I understand. Really, I understand. One of my favorite things about the show is just the, the opportunity to help people feel. Mm -hmm. So I think that we are seeing that, which is really beautiful. Yeah. Because that's something, you know, it's, it's not always easy to open up with all the things in life that have a chance to beat people down, to stay open. So I think this show is an invitation to stay open. Yeah. Also that connection to Greek mythology, there's always a lesson, there's always, you know, and that kind of, I think, connects audiences even more mm -hmm. at the end. Um, next question. Hi, um, I saw the show last night and you both were incredible. And so my question is, um, I was wondering like how the kind of rehearsal process has been and all the different itera iterations, especially with your characters keeping like the parallel with Hades and Persephone. One, I didn't say this earlier, but one thing with my character, the primary change for Orpheus uh, was that in the former versions, he had been a bit of a show off and a bit of a peacocking macho sort of guy. And I love that they decided to make the change to sort of trade his bravado for a sense of guilelessness. Mm. That, that's one of my favorite changes uh, throughout the last two months, yeah. for me at least. I think what's interesting is um, some behind the scenes that you might not know for those who aren't familiar with the rehearsal process is the amount of changes, um, script and lyric and music-wise and story-wise that go on, go down, really, go downtown. Um, because it's a development of a show, it's insane, the amount of paper wasted as the green captain. No, I'm joking. But seriously, the amount of like lyric changes you get of the, the day of a preview. Or, um, hey guys, re remember these four pages of different music because we're going to do that tomorrow during rehearsal. Or, hey guys, we're going to cut this. Um, you're not actually singing this anymore. So-and-so is. But now there's new choreography. The changes are immense. But I found that it helped me discover my character because I was distracted and I wasn't hounded down in a small, narrow perspective of what I think my character should have been. So it was helpful for me, but it's also a lot. That's really challenging. Mm -hmm. That makes your performances even more impressive, guys. Uh, next question. Hi. Hi. Uh, you both are amazing, first of all. Here I go. Uh, <laughs> my question is, how do you maintain your vocal stamina, your vocal health, doing eight shows a week? I feel like it's three things. Uh, sleep, water, and technique. Uh, you, uh, I have a great teacher that I work with regularly, and Eva has some amazing teachers she's worked with, too. So I think just that maintenance, it's like going to the auto shop. You have to make sure if you're or take, making a pit stop in a, in a NASCAR race, it's important to do it. 
Just to make sure the tires have enough air in them. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> exactly. He said it. Everything. I I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we do have one question from Twitter. Noel Hannibal wants to know, how did you feel the first time you heard the audience gasp in that one moment? <laughs> We're not going to spoil it, but you guys know the moment that Noel is talking about. <laughs> We had been warned, neither one of us were part of the New York Theater Workshop, and so we had been warned that that might happen, so we weren't as surprised yeah. as we would have otherwise been. But um, it's, it's a nice feeling when you do hear that because you feel that the audience is where you are as characters. They're right there with you. I love that moment. I love a dramatic moment on stage, and sometimes it's not as audible. Sometimes it's very audible. Sometimes you literally hear, no. Um, and either way, everyone's with you. Because it's almost like sometimes I feel like the audience is like amongst the workers. So when it happens, how, see, how do I answer this without telling yeah. everyone? I think you're doing a great job. I'm going to shut up. Uh, I did an audible. Oh, right, you've that heard was that, my, yeah. you probably heard, yeah, if you heard that on okay. Tuesday, that was me. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> guys, I can't express enough how much fun this show was. Like I said, from beginning to end, you are locked in, and that is so, I feel like, rare to just be like so invested for two and a half hours. So uh, I know you guys have put an incredible amount of work into this show. I hope that people can make some time to go out to see it. You will not regret it. Uh, you guys can catch Hades Town at the Walter Kerr Theater and visit HadesTown.com for ticket information. Please put your hands together for Eva Noblezada and Reeve Carney. Thank you.